Artifacts are incredibly powerful in Call of Dragons if you have the right ones. So which ones are the very best? To get the answer to that question, I talked to some veterans from some of the very first servers in the game. So stick around in this video for the best artifacts at the legendary and epic tier of rarity. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and one of my favorite aspects of this game is the artifact system. It's one of the things that really differentiates this game from Rise of Kingdoms, which is its predecessor. But what I want to talk about is which ones are actually worth putting your dust into. Some are definitely better than others. And by the way, if you like guides about Call of Dragons designed to help you get value and smash your enemies, consider subscribing to the channel. I've been making two videos a day about Call of Dragons, which is absolutely insane. So thank you for honoring my commitment to your getting the best knowledge possible by subscribing to the channel and throwing a like on the video. Let's get right into it. And at the end of the video, I'll give a little bit more explanation about artifact basics in case that's what you want. So first up, in no particular order, by the way, for our top three legendaries is going to be Shadow Blades. And the reason this is good is just very, very simple. It's a lot of damage and it's easy to aim. And it's honestly just that simple. This is an artifact you put onto Marksman units. It's giving you Marksman unit attack and also Legion attack which I think is a good stat to generally have on your marksman. Maxed out, this is giving you 24% marksman unit attack. That is coming from the dust that you apply. The uh, uh, legion attack over here comes from maxing the star level on the artifact. And the max damage factor you can get is 3,600, which is insane. Now, targets do take 15% less damage per additional target, but you get more overall damage by hitting more things. So you want to hit lots of stuff. This is a great artifact to use on Kanara or Nico if you're using legendary heroes. Of course, Guanwin is a good hero at the epic tier if you're going to drop Shadow Blades. But I think ideally, even if your legendary hero has only their first skill max, you'd prefer to use them. And Nico, I think, is just really easy to get from gold keys and is a slam dunk. Let's go to the next artifact on my list. And this sucker right over here is Kingslayer. Kingslayer is actually kind of insane. Uh, at base, it's doing damage to five enemies in a designated arc. Okay, not that big a deal, right? The damage factor base is 1,800. Max is 3,600. Targets take 15% less damage per additional target hit. I mean, that's not any different than the Shadow Blades we were looking at, right? Well, until you scroll down. And it says, if the target is another Lord's Legion and it has fewer than 10% of units remaining, it is immediately defeated. So this basically has a built-in execute effect. I don't know if you played a warrior in World of Warcraft. I did. And that's what this feels like. Finishing off targets that are low. Kingslayer on cavalry seems insane. The only problem here is that uh, cavalry feels like a whale's play at the start of the game. So unless you're spending, you're probably not hunting to build a cavalry march. But if you did, let me tell you, Kingslayer is insanely good. Cavalry attack and legion attack are the bonus attributes that you get from the dust and star levels, respectively. Let's jump to the top three, final artifact in the list here. And there are honestly a lot of really good ones. And, you know, depending on who you talk to, this could influence your decision. But I think we have to include Phoenix Eye in this list. At base, it's giving you magic unit attack and legion attack but that goes to an upwards of 24% and 22% respectively from your dust and your star levels. In terms of the damage, it deals damage to up to five enemies in a designated circle, and the legions take 15% less damage per additional target. Am I crazy, or do they not list the damage factor for some reason? In the picture, they show it's a lot of damage, and this is the legendary artifact that you want to drop onto one of your mages, and there are a lot of really good mages in this game. In fact, you could put it onto Waldir. You could put it onto any of the legendary mages, such as Lilia or Velen. You could also put this on to Alwyn, and it would be really insane. This is just a lot of damage, and that's the game plan with an artifact like this, just moving in on tons of damage. No utility at all. This is very much unlike some of the runners-up that I want to talk about, such as, for example, the Tier of Arban. 
Now, this is the one that I happen to get, and I think this effect is really, really cool. You drop a ground effect that heals lightly wounded units. This triggers once every two seconds for eight seconds um, and heals four legions in the designated area at a time. I love this thing, man. I am using it. I enjoy it. It gives defense, which is not ideal. Uh, ideally, I think attack is better for like a Lilia, but whatever. Uh, maxed out, it's 24% and 22%, and the healing factor is 800. Uh, even when maxed out, it starts at 400 at base. So you get all the way up to that 800 extra factor, and I am loving this artifact. Very, very fun. Love the heal effect. Can recommend very highly. Now, what I also was told was a really insane artifact is the Fang of Ashkari. Fang certainly would have been a candidate for top three. And this is, again, one of those whales items, in my opinion. At the start of the game, to really run a tank effectively, I think you want to be whaled out, and then it's really nutty. But if you did that, not only are you getting Legion defense, so what's interesting, this works for any troop type. It's just Legion defense. Like, there's no specific troop type, which is very interesting. But really... The unit you want to run in there is going to be infantry, right? That's ideally what it would be. It has a very low rage cost, only 400. I mean, it just activates very fast, and it's got a 1 minute 30 second cooldown, which is also really fast. And what does it do? It sets a circle fixed at your legion's location when you cast it, and it deals damage every second to up to four legions within the circle. Damage factor of 1,000 when maxed. Duration of eight seconds, and that damage does reduce based on hitting more things. So if you were whaled out and you charged in, you'd not only be super tanky relative to everybody else based on your whale status, but it's also got the defense, and then you just start doing area of effect damage, which is insane. And it's doing area of effect damage to the things near you, which are presumably the things that you're, uh, you know, sort of your immediate threats that you're trying to barrel through or could be blocking your path. So this guy seems really, really nutty, but... Let's be real for a second, okay? There are a lot of just great legendary artifacts, but most likely you're going to be going with an epic, okay? I certainly will be using some epics at the start, and I do plan to spend a good bit of money. So which epic would I recommend the most? That's Magic Bomb. Magic Bomb is basically the epic version of your Phoenix Eye, which means since I've been recommending mages to pretty much everyone free to play or low spend, Magic Bomb is really great. Gives you attack and also legion attack. So that's magic and legion. Then uh, what does it do? Well, you throw a bomb at the selected legion. After eight seconds, the bomb will explode, dealing damage to up to three nearby enemy legions. So they can walk away from this. It's magic damage factor of 1,800 and does less damage uh, per additional target that shows up. But still, I like this thing. Magic Bomb seems really cool. If the person who has the magic bomb on them runs away, I suppose you could maybe get away from it, but this is very popular, and my understanding is that if you aren't using one of those legendaries, this is the sort of go-to for players in the earlier seasons of the game. Now, from here, there are a couple other epics that I personally think are noteworthy, and both of these are used at range. One of those things is very simply the centaur bow. This is a cavalry unit item. It's giving you defense, which is not bad for cavalry, and it just does physical damage factor. Deals damage up to three enemy legions in a designated circle. I mean, you see the trend here. Area of effect damage to, I mean, a bunch of enemies is really good in this game. The damage factor is moderate, 1,500 when maxed, 20% cav defense, and 18% legion defense on this item. I like the centaur bow at the epic tier. From there, there is one other epic that I wanted to call your attention to. That's the Heart Piercer. This is something you would use on your Marksman, giving them attack and Legion attack. This is doing damage as well to a single Legion. It's 2,000 damage factor, and the target has a 65% chance to gain physical defense break. I love debuffs, man. Physical defense reduction of 15% for three seconds is pretty wicked. So I really like the Heart Piercer item for the debuff. And those are the epics and the honorable mentions. Now, you'll notice that I stayed away from a lot of artifacts that are similar. Like, for example, Springs of Silence. When I look at this, I'm like, bro, this is really good, right? It's infantry attack and also does a lot of damage. But this is not really what your infantry are for. Your infantry 
in my estimation, are there to soak damage rather than to deal damage, which is why Spring of Silence, they're good, but they're, I, as I understand it, not as popular. Other items that seem really cool, just as an example, are related specifically to rallying and garrisoning, which, you know, isn't going to be relevant for most players most of the time. Uh, but the Deep Woods Symphony from the Breath of the Forest is an effect that benefits you when you're garrisoning. And conversely, you've got the Blood Blade Banner, which gives you a benefit when you're rallying. But, you know, I, I tried to really focus this on the field, and I tried to give you a narrow set of options. If I had to mention, like, one more, just because I think it's cool, I mean, I think all of them are pretty damn cool, but Storm Arrows is pretty legit. It's a cav item that literally lets you blink to a specific location. You teleport to that location. Um, and your Legion gains Rampage, 12% damage for four seconds after you execute the blink. So closing the distance with cavalry can be very tricky. This makes it a heck of a lot easier. You're guaranteed to move in on your target. Hopefully you'll be able to do a lot of damage when you get there, which is what that 12% at max, by the way, it's 24% is gonna do for you. It even increases the teleport range. It doubles it when you get to max skill level on this thing. Wow, that's really nuts. Now, in terms of the base mechanics of artifacts, just a quick refresher on how that works. Your artifacts are enhanced in a number of ways. One of the ways that you do that is by increasing their level. You use dust, and this dust is season-specific. At the end of the season, your artifact will reset its level all the way back down to one. But while you're leveled up, you can star up the artifact. Now, increasing the star level of your artifact is really powerful. That's how you unlock the substat that I've been showing. So while the dust works on that first stat, in this case, it's magic unit defense, the substat in this case is legion defense, and that's boosted from the star level. So if we were to go in here and drop some experience onto this thing, I will do this, even though it's really expensive, and I probably shouldn't, just to be able to show you what a star upgrade looks like here. Am I going to do this? Um, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm just going to do it for the vid, bro, for the vid. Okay, so I took it to level 30. I can continue to level this up, even though I haven't started up. But if I wanted to start up, I actually have to throw away, to get from three stars to four stars, epic quality artifacts, which is really wild. So it's quite expensive to go from three stars to four stars. Going from one to two took green items, so you have a bunch of junkers that are green. Going from two to three took a bunch of blue junkers, so, you know, you get a bunch of junkers that are blue. But epics? Bro, that feels expensive to me, but, hey, baby, 6% Legion defense seems really good. So I mentioned all of this toward the end of the video because if, in fact, you wanted to get some of these upgrades going, then something to keep in mind is that you don't want to slam dunk upgrade the skills on every one of your artifacts as soon as possible because some of the artifacts that maybe are less popular or uh, less powerful are ones that you might use as fodder for something more powerful at the start of the season. But that's something that is a little bit risky of a choice. And I mentioned this also in part because you might be tempted to go into your shop, something you know about if you've been watching my beginner's guides, um, that you can actually scrap items, including some of your artifacts, but you may not want to scrap a lot of these, at least initially, because you're going to need them to star up the artifacts that you have. Now, remember, your star level and skill level on your artifact will be retained from season to season, but the level itself will be dropped back down to one. And you may need to level it up again to actually get the full star benefit. In other words, this may jump down to its base defense value until you get to level 10 again. You won't have to star it up, but it'll give you that 10% defense maybe once you get back to 10. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't reset that at all and you just keep it entirely. Now, it is important to mention that there is a specific event that lets you get more legendary artifacts. But in this video, my goal was to cover just the start of the game, the things that are available to most people who are opening up the game right now, looking at a beginner's guide, wondering, hey, which artifact is good? So I'll definitely be making more advanced lists as those artifacts come into the game and also as I get more exposure with them and use them firsthand. But if you enjoyed this video, do me the honor of throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. It's your support that makes it possible for me to make videos on YouTube every single day. So thank you for that support and consider checking out two videos in the end screen that I think you'll find super valuable. One is a video about Alwyn, who is a mage that is just really underrated in my opinion and is probably the best free-to-play epic in the game. 
The other video is some basic tips that if you don't know these, man, it is just going to help you so much.